Hello, it's Scott Manley here, and today I would like to talk to you about black holes. We are all science nerds here, so I'm sure you've all heard about the event horizon. That's the region of a black hole where gravity gets so strong that light cannot escape. Actually, it's really the point at which the curvature of space-time is such that there is no longer a way back outside the event horizon. Now, black hole uh, model comes from a guy called Carl Schwarzschild, who was trying to find the solution to Einstein's field equations for a point mass. Now, he actually did this, he derived the equations while fighting in World War I on the Russian front, and sadly, he would die less than a year later. So yeah, it was originally developed with things like planets and stars in mind, and it wasn't until the 1960s that the extreme limits of these equations started to get understood and interpreted. There is a magic distance from the centre called the Schwarzschild radius, where things kind of start to go weird. This radius you can calculate by uh, multiplying the mass of the object by 2, then multiply it by the constant of gravity, and then divide it by the speed of light squared. Now, if you do masses in terms of solar masses, it's a lot easier. You multiply the mass of the object in solar masses by about 2.95 kilometers. So that gives you the magic radius that if you concentrate all the mass inside of it, weird things happen. And by weird things, well, what we say is that inside this radius, uh, time-like paths become space-like and space-like things become time-like. That probably doesn't mean anything to you, but really what happens is any particle or light inside this radius finds that all of its possible future futures are inside. None of the futures go outside anymore. The only way to escape is to go back in time, so therefore it's impossible to escape. But it's a common trope in science fiction to have our heroes skirting the event horizon, getting up close to this really dangerous place. But while the event horizon is the point of no return, there's actually another more distant point of no reasonable return. Now, just above the event horizon, you can still send a signal out to the rest of the universe. But if you're, say, shooting a laser, right, you have to point it exactly away from the surface, right? If you point it exactly away, exactly radial outwards, it will continue and escape. But if you get it slightly off axis, then it will undergo the most extreme gravity turn possible. And if you're just above the event horizon and you don't point it straight up, the light will just curve around and fall back into the black hole. Now, the further out you go, the more sloppy your aim can be. And then there reaches a magical point at 1.5 times the Schwarzschild radius where you can actually fire your laser perpendicular, right, to the surface, to the event horizon, and the photons will orbit the black hole. This is a magic distance where the orbital velocity is the speed of light. We call this the photon sphere, a region where photons could, in theory, orbit the black hole. But in practice, they don't. You see, mundane objects orbiting the Earth, they will uh, they are actually stable. We've seen this. You, they can be eccentric. They can oscillate between their periaps and apoaps. But in the case of a photon, it is sitting on a knife edge, right? If it is slightly at the wrong distance or facing slightly the wrong direction, it will either escape off to infinity or it will fall inside this photon sphere, and from that point forwards, it will spiral down in towards the event horizon. Its unperturbed path will always bring it to the event horizon. The only way it could escape is if perhaps some nice person with a mirror intervenes and reflects it back outwards. Then it might possibly escape if the person has uh, angled their mirror correctly. Anyway, this photon sphere also corresponds to the closest a physical object could ever get to the black hole and orbit it, because any closer, and it would have to be moving faster than the speed of light. But even just outside this distance, the circular orbits are not stable. Now, those of us that understand New Newtonian orbital mechanics understand that you can fly by an object using a hyperbolic orbit. You fall in, and as you fall in towards it, your velocity increases, and at some point your velocity is sufficient to counterbalance the gravitational force, and you fly back off to infinity. 
But black holes follow the rules of general relativity, and things don't work exactly the way you'd expect. For a start, elliptical orbits in general relativity will find that their position of perihelion precesses around the central body. And while for planets like Mercury it's measured in arc seconds per century, around a black hole it can be many degrees per orbit. But even more fundamentally, the relationship between velocity and distance from the central body breaks down completely. If you start at infinity with zero energy and just the right amount of angular momentum, you will fall down towards the black hole on a parabolic trajectory, but as you get close, you will start to spiral instead, and eventually you will come into a circular orbit at two times the Schwarzschild radius. Bizarrely, this orbit has zero energy, it has the same energy as a particle at infinity, and in Newtonian physics, all orbits have negative energy because, of course, they're trapped inside the gravity well. If you want to orbit inside this radius but outside the photon sphere, you need progressively more and more energy. It's this weird inversion in the energy that makes these close orbits unstable. A little push to the orbit could make you either fly off to infinity or fall into the black hole. But anyway, this magic distance of two times the Schwarzschild radius, that is the closest you could realistically fly a spacecraft and still return to tell the tale. Any closer requires engines which are unlikely to exist out of sight of science fiction. But here's the question, what could you visit down there? Well, anything that stayed down there would have to be in a stable orbit. And as we've seen, because of this weird energy inversion, those circular orbits down really close are not stable. Turns out that the closest you can have a stable orbit is three times the Schwarzschild radius. This is called the innermost stable circular orbit. Outside of that distance, you could in theory have a planet orbiting. And there, well, there time would run about 30% slower. Now, before you start complaining to the writers of Interstellar, I gotta point out, in Interstellar, the black hole was a rotating black hole. And rotating black holes, well, they make things a whole lot more complicated in terms of orbits. And maybe if enough people are interested, I'll do a follow-up. But right now, black holes are blowing my mind enough that I need to take a rest. Until the next time, I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.